stop messing around, stop fooling around, stop delaying, stop procrastinating. Get up, get out, get it done. Everything is possible, nothing is a problem, and anything can be overcome. I just get my ass up out of bed, I get my shit together, and I get out and I start the fight. And that will transform you from uh, a mere mortal into a superhuman being. I've never, ever, ever met anybody who told me that they got rich watching their IRA or their 401k. Yeah, it's incredible when I was watching the news this week and seeing all of this information coming out about GameStop and the, and the Reddit short yeah, squeeze. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable stuff. I've never seen anything like it. It's crazy to me that people can so blatantly and in your face take these actions that they took. I mean, usually when we see this kind of thing happening on Wall Street, it's behind the scenes, it's a little bit more secretive. You're talking about Robin Hood shutting down. I'm talking about the hedge funds getting Robin Hood to shut down their platform so that the John Q public couldn't, couldn't put the short squeeze on them. Yeah. I mean, it's completely fucked up. And now the argument that Robin Hood is giving is that they didn't have the liquidity to- Well, they didn't have the liquidity. Okay. They absolutely didn't have the liquidity, which conveniently for them ends up being an argument that they can make now. But the truth of the matter is also that you had Melvin Capital and Cohen and these other guys putting the squeeze onto Robin Hood right. while they were getting their balls squeezed by the John Q. Public investing and buying up the stock. Markets are efficient when everybody's got same access to the same resources and information and there's fair trade and fair play. This was a situation where the people who are usually the winners didn't like losing and they were crybabies and they said, you gotta shut this thing down. And this guy Vlad at Robinhood is, is, is a problem. So what happened? They raised more money to meet liquidity requirements and they're, they're still going. There hasn't yet been a, an investigation by the SEC announced. I think it's fucked up. You do you know, think the SEC will find anything in the, I, that kind of investigation? I think somebody's got to do something. You, you can't have 364 days of the year be free markets and fair markets where buyers and sellers are trading freely with the same information and making informed decisions based on earnings and, uh, and data and, and analyses and numbers and, and, and news that comes out. But when you have these hedge funders that didn't see the internet chat groups and blogs communicating and getting together, f squeezing out their, their short positions, you know, that's just too fucking bad. Yeah. No, I remember Mar Mark Cuban even said his, uh, his 11 year old was, was trading GameStop. <laughs> well, it's, uh, there's a difference between trading and investing. Yeah. Let me just say that right now. I mean, you know, at the retail level for retail investors, investing is having a longer time horizon and basing your decisions on things like EBITDA and earnings and profitability and current earnings and future earnings and earnings per share and distributions and dividends, things like that, the traditional fundamental stuff will never go away as a bedrock of good decision making and investing. So, but when you're trading, it's, it's, it's like gambling. People are just going in and buying AMC. They were buying GameStop not looking at, at the fundamentals. GameStop's worth 15 bucks a share any day of the week, no matter how you slice it before this craziness started. And it got bid up to 480 bucks a, sh a share. Percentages were huge, yeah. Just because people are pissed and they wanted to squeeze the, these hedge funders. And it was an incredible thing. But, you know, people have to remember everything in life, economically speaking, investing, being a consumer, it's a zero sum Market, it's a zero sum game, everything. So when you go buy a pair of sneakers, you exchange money for goods. So that's zero sum. You get something in exchange for what you've given. When you are the winner on a stock trade and you make money, there is an equivalent counterpart that lost the same amount of money on the other side of that trade. Always no exceptions, that's how it works. So it's pretty brilliant that the John Q public from Reddit was hopping on to squeeze out these Wall Street hedge funds. But remember, on the way back down, you need a market to buy you out. Robin Hood shut down and all these guys were stuck at, at 480 bucks a share and they couldn't get out because Robin Hood shut down and the next day the shares went down to, you know, you saw it go to 320, you saw it go down to 250, 180, and there's no market for them to buy 
their shares that they paid whatever for. So you need a corresponding buyer when you sell and everybody needs each other in an efficient market. Robinhood created an inefficient marketplace because they broke the fucking rules. They didn't have the liquidity. They knew they didn't have the liquidity. They were making the market for all this trading that was going on, knowing that they didn't have the liquidity and creating a big problem for everybody. And they said, oh, sorry, we're gonna shut down the platform so we can get some liquidity. What do you think the alternative would have been? What would have been a better move for Robinhood to do at that point when liquidity was at risk? Well, they should have raised the money that they needed to raise. They did that in four seconds, by the way. They shut down the trading platform that night. They had the money, they had a billion raised the next day and another billion and change raised the day after that. They could have done that while leaving the platform open. They burnt their name in the public. I, I don't know who's gonna wanna continue to invest and, and play on that platform. There's other choices. Go seek out Acorn, go seek out Stash. There's Happiness, which is out there making investing in real estate accessible to anybody for as little as $10. You don't have to have a $1,000, $10,000 minimum. You don't have to be an accredited investor. You open up an account, you link it to your bank account, and you set if you wanna make a recurring investment or a one-time investment, and you put 10 bucks in, or you can put 100 bucks in, or you what, can put- What would the benefit be, uh, like what would the potential returns be for something of that small? Well, you have to, look, risk versus reward. If you invest $10, you're gonna get a reward based on a $10 investment. But your percentage is gonna be the same as it would if you invested $10 million. Uh, so how big a piece do you wanna take? That's up to you and how much money you wanna make available. But the great news for everybody is that investing is now available way more widely and way more accessible than it ever was before in history because technologically there's these apps and there's these opportunities and companies that are coming along who are making it available. What you're really getting is access and you're getting in the game. I mean, you gotta start, start. You could never start before, you can start now. Get started because it's gonna change your mindset. So I don't care what color skin you have, how much money you make, what part of the tracks you're from, what mommy and daddy issues you have, what your shitty friends and teachers told you you would never amount to be. Any of that stuff doesn't matter now because you can start investing. You're now an owner, you're now an investor. You're not sitting on the sidelines saying, oh, I'm just gonna sit around and take whatever life is giving me from my dead end career or a W-2 income that I make from my job that I fucking hate and after taxes, I don't have any money left to invest. You know, I know all of that and people suffer in life from that everywhere. It's everywhere and a lot of people. But you know what? If you have $10 a month, you can invest. And if you don't, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop blowing money on stupid shit that you don't need to impress people you don't know, like, or care about and you haven't even met yet. I mean, imagine the mindset. If you can sit around your, your house and say to your kids, hey, we're gonna start investing. What do you think we should invest in? Let's choose. And your kids are gonna be like, what, huh, what? And you keep doing it regularly, week, after week, after week, month after month after month. Pretty soon, your kids are gonna be watching their mom or their dad or both or whatever invest. And they're gonna watch what happens to investments because everyone now has a better chance of breaking out of that 99 percentile mindset, which is the, the sheep mindset, the I'll just learn what they teach you in the school and go out and get a job and I'm stuck and then I wonder why I can't get ahead and all that stuff that we've talked about, George you have a greater chance of breaking free of that. Start investing. Now I wanna go back to the difference between investing and trading a little bit because I think for those of us that remember 2008 and even right now with the GameStop, um, you know, you could call it a scandal. Um, I think a lot of people are worried that they're now competing with a game that's rigged against them. So what would you say to that and, and how do you speak to that? Look, trading can, is, is tantamount to gambling in my opinion. Uh, you're trying to ride a wave, you're trying to figure out momentum from the public, maybe you're chasing it, maybe you're one of the few people that's leading the charge, I don't know. I'm not a trader, I've never been a trader, and when I invest, I invest for the long term, and everybody I know who's wealthy and successful, and who's smart, and who knows how to invest, and who's an investor for real, they invest for the long term. They invest based on sound fundamentals, numerical data, earnings, profits, earnings per share, dividends, things like that. Can I ask what long-term means to you? Well, long-term is, is the long-term, man. 10, 20, 30, 40 years out. And, and things that are happening now, George, our world is changing so fast. So if you wanna get into investing, find things that resonate with you, that speak to who you are at your core. If you're 
anti-smoking and anti-alcohol don't invest in stocks or funds that own stocks that are alcohol and tobacco stocks, right? That kind of thing. If you're a, a green, environmentally conscious person, find those companies, find those technologies, find those stocks. I'm in the real estate business. I have the significant majority of my investable assets in real estate, and I always have. And sure, I'm very cognizant of the stock markets and the equities markets, and I've been investing in stocks and equities for a long time, but by far, I'm more heavily invested in real estate. You know what's changing for me now? I'm way more inspired and I'm way more motivated because what I see are areas like quantum mechanics, artificial intelligence, genomics, internet technologies, freshwater distribution and desalinization. That's a big one. I think for my grandkids, that's gonna be the gold of the future or the Bitcoin of the future. There's things like biopharmaceuticals. We're talking about curing diseases in time frames and at rates that we haven't been discussing ever before in history. We're talking about extending the human life to 120, 130 years old, right? Right now we're living to 70s and 80s, the, the majority of the population. Yeah. Imagine if you could extend life to be 120, 130 years old and it was safe and it was healthy. I mean, it's amazing, amazing stuff. These discussions are happening right now. Are you gonna be on the sideline, sticking your thumb up your ass and being like, oh, woe is me? Get in, pick something, what speaks to you? That stuff speaks to me. So I'm making investments in all of those areas I just mentioned because it, it excites me, it turns me on. I see those areas as the areas that are going to really power our population and our world for the future. And investments that I make today in those areas are gonna be so significant. I remember a story from when I was a kid, and the story looked at what happened to the person that invested $10,000 in Dell computers over a 10 or 12 year period during that time frame. And the result was that the $10,000 amounted into, at the end of the day, something like $100 million. Some big number, I don't remember what the number, but it, was, it knocked me off my ass. I'll never forget the example while I don't remember the metrics. And what I remember from the story was invest and then let time take care of something that you believe in. If the world is moving in that direction, you're gonna end up with something way bigger than what you put in day one. And that's really the goal of anybody who invests in anything. So I think today, here in 2021, we're at the cusp of so many of these opportunities. Just last week, General Motors announced that they're not gonna have any more gas-powered cars by 2035, and the whole market's gonna follow now and the government is gonna hop on and enable legislation and enable and encourage investment and tax incentives. So in about 14 years, we're not gonna have any more gas-powered cars being sold at dealerships. You wanna go and buy a new car, you're gonna be buying an electric car. It's amazing. Who are the players and what are the technologies that's gonna ride that incredible long-term wave of an opportunity? Find out now, you can invest in it now. Again, you've got companies like Acorn, Stash, happiness, pick your asset class, maybe spread out a hundred bucks across a bunch of asset classes, maybe spread out 10 grand across a bunch of asset classes. Get started, be regular, be persistent, be consistent, and get started. The most important thing is to get started. So full disclosure, I've recently learned about Happy Nest. I ended up meeting those guys because I'm in the real estate business. They sought me out, they're in the real estate business. I met I put some money in as an investor and they've asked me to join their board of directors. So I'm now on the, the board of directors of Happy Nest, but I believe in it. And I think that if you check it out, you'll find that it's an incredible opportunity. There's other investing apps out there. This has a $10 minimum. That's the big point of difference. It opens up the barriers and it breaks down all the walls to everybody. $10, you can get in, you can own real estate. Yeah, I mean, what, do you, what I hear you saying is kind of two things. One it's really just creating the habit is, is the biggest hurdle. You have the, the to create hurdle. habits dictate what happens to you. Yeah. If you do something once, you're not gonna get a result. When you go to the gym, sorry, I cut you off. That's but fine. when you go to the gym, <laughs> you don't get ripped by going to the gym once. Come on, it's persistence, it's regularity, it's ongoing, it's a commitment. Same with investing. What was the second? So the second one is relationship. We talk about relationship all the time, and really what we're talking about here is we're creating an economic relationship with something that you believe in that goes on beyond just making the, you know. George, 1 billion term. percent, yeah. 1 billion percent. But for the person that's not yet an investor, become an investor, become an owner. School debt is huge for a lot of people, but you know, credit debt and loads of other debt are, are also rampant. How do you feel about investing while in debt? Do you feel like? You wanna, you wanna deal with your debt? Invest. You wanna have more money to pay off your debt? Invest. 
you want to have more money to deal with your credit card situation and your, and your student loans, invest and make more money. You want more money to be able to invest more? Work a second job. Figure out how to get more money out of your existing primary job. Add more value to your company, to your boss. Let your team see that you're more valuable, earn more money, invest the increases, invest the raises. Yeah, something that uh, a lot of people are talking about is lifestyle creep, you know, that as you, as you gain more money, your lifestyle also increases. And well, if you, you can prevent that, then you can, you know, reinvest that money. That, well, George, know, for sure, people have to learn how to live below their means and within their means so that they can accomplish everything they need to in their budget. Look, before, you never had access to being able to invest in great commercial income producing real estate. No one had access. That was for the wealthiest families, the 1%, the banks, the pension funds, the insurance companies. I mean, those are the folks that own all the greatest real estate and they never sell it. So how do you get in on owning great real estate? Check out happiness, that's my suggestion. How do you get in on owning portions of shares of stock or shares of stock? Check out Stash and Acorn, that's how you get in. So on the other hand, you have you know, younger people that may be crippled with debt. You may have older people that feel like it's too late for them. Do you it, no, it's never too late. Younger people have the world ahead of them. They've got nothing but time ahead of them. They can use the compounding factor of investing and compounding interest and compounding investments and contributions. They can use all of that to their advantage, but young or old, it doesn't matter. I mean, start. Start, get into it, be consistent, be regular. That's how you win. That's how you make a change. If you don't do that, then all you do is rely on your W-2 income from your job. Let's say if you are a W-2 employee, that's all you'll ever be unless you start a business or unless you invest. And if you wanna be a W-2 employee and you're satisfied, great, you've won, and you can keep scrolling and get off this conversation right now. But for those of you out there that want more uh, than the opportunities you're getting from your W-2 employment, and from your highly taxed dollars from your job that you have, start investing. For example, look at the Green Bay Packers, yeah. right? The Green Bay Packers went public several years ago. They sold shares of the team to the fans, to the public. Can you imagine mentally what that did to the Green Bay Packers fans who bought a share of the football team? Are you kidding me? I mean, before they were just a fan going to the stadium, freezing their fucking asses off. Now they're an owner of that team and sure, it's a couple of shares. It's, it's not anything so meaningful that they have control or a say. They don't have any of that, but they own something that they're passionate about. It's a relationship. It's such an important relationship. And how psyched are they? They've taken ownership. Man, that was such a brilliant move. And they've created long-term loyalty, long-term trust, long-term relationship. And it, it was just an amazing move by Green Bay to do that. Think about what that's going to do for you and your kids and your family if you start taking ownership of the things that you love, that inspire you now. You mentioned uh, Bitcoin a little bit a while ago. Um, do you feel like that is something that you're going to head in an investment well, direction? Well, all, yeah. all of the cryptos are part of the discussion about how the world's being disrupted right now. So as a society, we haven't had widespread adoption of cryptocurrency yet, so we're not using it transactionally on a day-to-day -day basis. But what we are doing is trading it. Adoption, if it occurs, George, it's gonna to topple societies, it could create wars, it's gonna be incredible. And people better wake up and pay attention. So where do you wanna be while this is all happening? Do you wanna be on the sidelines? You, you can get a Coinbase account and you can throw in 20 bucks and own crypto. Now, I wouldn't recommend trading it, it's highly volatile. But if you want to buy it and just put it away, pretend like you've lost the money already and wake up in 10 years and see where it is, I think you're going to be pretty shocked. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, the twins that helped develop Facebook, they now have the a company. Winklevi. Yeah, the Winklevi. Yeah, the Winklevi now have a, uh, a, they com do. a company where you can they have their own card, exchange. card and all that. Yeah, so. And they're on the media a lot, messaging a lot about crypto and their exchange, which brings me to a whole other discussion about the media and messaging and what happens when we receive these messages. Let's talk about that in a second. I yeah, want to sure. come back to that. Totally. But crypto for sure is another one of these opportunities and another one of these sectors in our world that is uh, really poised to change so much materially about our world. I mean, can you imagine? I'm in the real estate business. I buy real estate all the time. It's a complicated thing to do. I have to have teams of lawyers. There's title companies. The seller has their team of lawyers. 
and there's banks and lenders and every, there's documents. I mean, you stack it 40 feet high, there's so many documents. I mean, it's complicated stuff. Can you imagine if I can just go to my seller and hand him or her a flash drive with crypto on it and they just sign the deed right over to me and then I just hand that deed off to the, my assistant who can go down to the county courthouse and record it and I'm done? The government doesn't know about it. There's no taxing that could occur. There's no intermediary, so I don't have to pay all those fees and costs and taxes to close. It's, it's like buying gum at a five and done. And when that can happen, it's gonna freak the fuck out of governments because governments need tax revenue to fund police and fire and public schools and safety and all the stuff that we need in our communities. And it's really gonna be an issue. You know, we don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, next week, next year, next decade, or whatever it's going to be, but it's coming. And it's going to really have an impact on the banking system, on our government, and our taxation, and our public revenue systems. Where do you want to be while this stuff's happening? I mean, for so little, you can get involved. Get involved. You would mentioned the media thing before, and you said you wanted to oh, roll man. So, back on that. Look, media, the purpose of media is to put out messaging to get a desired result, right? If we could all just understand that, and anticipate and figure out what the desired result is, there would be far less people feeling susceptible to the world around us. I mean, imagine, I mean, look at your paper, look at your favorite paper, your favorite TV show, your news program, even social media. On Monday, the economy's doing great. On Tuesday, the economy's not doing great. On Wednesday, the economy's doing great. On Thursday, the economy's crashing. But Janet Yellen's here now, so the economy's gonna do great. I mean, you're gonna see contradicting headlines even on the same day, it's amazing. They're looking for a result. They're looking for a response from you, the viewer, from you, the public. I mean, we all know that media is partisan. We know who's right-wing media and who's left-wing media, so there's that example right there. But even leaving politics out of it, at the very least, there's advertising that goes on with every single publication, and so they're really just trying to get you to you know, consume it so that they can pay their advertisers. George, a million percent. Hey, I'll give you a recent example. I was invited to participate in a well-known podcast recently, and the morning of the podcast, I got a call from the production team saying, you know what, we're not gonna go with you today, we'll circle back to you. I said, really, what happened? I said, well, you know, we looked at the, uh, at the schedule of guests today and we looked at the topics and you know, your, your byline and your storyline just doesn't fit our agenda. So there you go right there, I didn't fit someone's agenda. So whatever viewpoint they thought I was going to offer was counter to what they wanted to put out. I don't wanna get information that is trying to drive me or lead me in a certain direction because it serves the person putting out the message. I just want to get facts and data. It's really hard to get facts and data these days, I think. Yeah, I mean, to, to play devil's advocate, is that a, a manifestation of the free market where you have media companies that are, you know... Well, media isn't media. Medias are businesses. Right, yeah. I mean, it's the media industry. It's the media business. Yeah, exactly. And, and, they're, and they're getting the eyeballs. They're getting the money. And so the market is dictating what is being sold to them. You want to know how to solve the media problem in our world, George? Media should be owned publicly by the government. It should be a bipartisan owned and operated effort, and it should put out facts and data, which is free of partisanship and free of drama, and put it out on social media, print, TV, everywhere that media is consumed and distributed. The government-owned media effort should be there and it should be factual and it should be data-based and you know, f free of all of the, the shit that happens when someone with an agenda is in charge of putting out messaging. And you'd have, I would assume, some kind of regulator, you know, third, third party regulator to some extent. Whatever, sure, regulator. however it works. Keep it fair and honest, keep it bipartisan, keep it free of all the shit, you know, keep it free of a Democratic slant or Republican slant or a left or a right slant or whatever you want to... Right, well, like where my brain goes is immediately like the Fed. Like uh, that's what it sounds like. Uh... Well, they'll probably have an agenda themselves. However you create the oversight board, yeah. whatever you do, but have it be something that's, that's funded and paid for by all sorts of different types with all sorts of different interests. I mean, it would be great if I could just get facts and then I'll make up my own mind. I looked at my favorite news publications. I look at the same three every day, uh, and I make sure that they're on all sides of the political spectrum because I don't want to just get message from one side of the political spectrum. So I looked at all three every day for like two weeks straight, and I notice immediately that one puts out how great the economy is doing, 
and the other puts out how shitty the economy is doing. And one cites all sorts of reasons why the economy is doing great, and the other says people are out of work, there's wage carnage, and the pandemic's impacts on our society. And I know it's tough. I know life is tough, and the world is tough economically and financially out there. I mean, I, I see people out of work. I see people having a tough time. So I, I get that, and I see that. But, but what's the reality in the aggregate for us as a country, as a society? It's tough to know. Well, you know what I found in one of the publications is that uh, every day it was like there was a new article that said low-income people are disproportionately impacted by vaccines. Low-income people are disproportionately impacted by testing sites. Low-income people are disproportionately impacted by Joe Biden's administration. I mean, it's dizzying. I got news for you. Low-income people are probably disproportionately impacted by everything at any given moment on any given Tuesday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Low-income people are disproportionately impacted because they're low income. And it's not wrong. It's not like not true. But the, the dramatization of it was, was something that I noticed. The message I have for anybody who's feeling like you're disproportionately impacted by whatever's happening in your world, go out and start investing. You can now for the first time ever and it's not going away, you can invest, you have access to it. I can only invest to what I have access in. I can only invest in what I know about. I can only invest to what's in front of me. But you know what, right now, everything's in front of me, everything I have access to, and I can learn and know about everything. So I'm going to invest in things that are different than the retail companies and McDonald's and Nike. I mean, those are great, don't get me wrong. But I see the future being solar power and genomics and artificial intelligence and crypto. I mean, that's what I see our future as. So I'm going to invest in those. What are you going to invest in? I got to go home and figure out what I'm going to invest in. Gotta... Yeah, uh, please. <laughs> Take some time to... Look, if, if, if this discussion inspires you and you only to go start investing, I think we've done a good thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I can't, I can't stress it enough. I want everybody to really take to heart and understand that you have the opportunity now to do what you could never do before for yourself, for your kids. And it doesn't have to be the amount of money that you invest. It has to be that you invest any amount of money. That's where the change is gonna come. Yeah. Now, does this mean that you're shifting gears a little bit away from real estate or is that still your- Not away focus? from real estate, yeah. but I'm allocating some dollars to these areas that I talked about because I'm, I'm really excited about them. Yeah. But how do, you, how do you feel about the future of real estate with that? I feel that the future of real estate's never been brighter. People still need places to live. There's a vast undersupply of housing that we're experiencing now and that I think is only gonna continue. So these states and these cities and municipalities need to let developers build, come up with solutions that are build solutions and build your way out of it. And investors and developers will come in and do it. You gotta let them come in and do it. Uh, so I love the real estate markets. I love the real estate opportunities. Check out Happy Nest, go to Happy Nest app and it's in the app store on your phone and download the app. It'll take you uh, t 10 seconds. You'll, you'll fill out a profile and you'll connect your checking account to it. You have to do that with all these, Acorn and Stash and all of them. Connect your checking account to it. It takes uh, a minute or it might take a day or two to verify this in your verification protocol and get started. Anything else for it today, Peter? Uh, I have some Zest Quest for you, Oh, George. you do, yeah? I do. Let, let's hear them. So, <laughs> so what are you gonna go invest in? What am I going to go? What excites well, you? Like what, what, what kinds of areas, industries, companies? I'll tell you, I'll, be, I'll give you one example yeah. for me. And I, I asked you the Zest Quest and I'm going to give you a Zest answer. That's but, great. And then I want to hear your answer. Yeah. But uh, a couple of nights ago, I learned about a company called Plenty, privately held. Artie has received uh, like a series D of venture funding. So they've raised a bunch of money, 140, 200 million dollars. And these guys have technologically advanced ways of growing organic food efficiently and uh, quickly indoors so you're not subject to weather, seasonality, uh, uh, one or two harvests a year. So they're doing it indoors and they're doing it at a cost that's way below traditional farming. I think shit like that is where the world is headed for sure. We need cheaper, we need faster, we need better, we need healthier, we need more. So this little company Plenty who we can invest in right now because they're still privately held. Uh, but keep an eye on them. I mean, that kind of thing really excited me. No, that, that's, that's awesome. What about you? Yeah. So, I mean, real estate's the given because we're, we're, you know, we're here, we're talking about real estate. Yeah. So, so that's always on my mind and that's always something that I'm interested in. Um, but 
as far as what I'm interested in, you know, just in my life, yeah. you know, health is a big thing for me. So supplement companies, uh, you know, those are, those are things where, um, you know, quantifying, like I'm wearing like a, a wearable right now that tracks my sleep and tracks my, uh, my steps and all yeah. that. Those kinds of companies. Good stuff. Well, genomics and biopharma. Right. No, exactly. And so check so out, kind of check out the, st the, the stories and the exciting opportunities in genomics and biopharma. Yeah. For you. The one that popped out in my mind in the news this week was I think, uh, somebody just developed, uh, milk that is vegan, but it's dairy. So it's like a cloned milk, Yeah. but, uh, it's not milked from an animal. And so I think, safe and healthy, right? Well, I don't know about that yet, but but I, I do think I had not thought about that before as a solution to you know the, the vegan. What makes dairy dairy? Like, what do they remove from it to make it not dairy? Well, no, it is dairy. It is cow's milk, but it's not from a cow physically. It's cloned. It's genetically created milk. Shit. Really? Yeah. Right. And so that I think I see as a future you know, alternative for a lot of vegans that are, you know, having nutritional needs that can't be met through just vegetables. If they can control safety and, exactly. and, yeah, yeah. and there's, health there's standards. A, there's a lot then, of yes. things that are going to need to be, happen before this is a real yeah. thing. You want to control the good side to that coin and not the, the weird and fucked up side to that coin. And, and that's the case. Anything with cloning. And, and any genetic. We've all seen those movies. I was gonna say, yeah, any genetic thing yeah. is always a danger. But, um, but I think that's something interesting to keep an eye out for. Yeah, man. All that stuff. So there you go. You've got your examples right there. Go home, Google these things, and, and, and see what you get. I mean, you just get started. And then when you make a decision, figure out how to invest in it. If they're already public, you can go to a corner stash and buy in. Yeah. If you want to buy into real estate, go to Happy Nest. Yeah. Maybe you can throw up a, a link or a, a logo or whatever you can so that the viewers can see what we're talking about. But it's, uh, I was excited that they asked me to come aboard. I was excited to make the investment, and I'm excited to be associated with the company. Because I believe that anything that makes investing available to everybody is only good. And uh, I just think it's the way of the world, it's the way of the future, and uh, everyone's hopping on and everyone's going to be doing it for a long time.